Stand where you are. All right, get them up, both of you. and customs. That's Morton, Narcotics Bureau. He got away. The sailor's dead. Call the coroner's office, will you please? kid, just foolish. Somebody in Shanghai told him a way to make an easy buck and he believed him. Smuggling, nothing to it. All you needed was a little luck. And so one night on a Shanghai dock, they slipped something into his hand that looked like an ordinary can of tobacco. Only it wasn't. And John Whalen wasn't lucky. That was the start of tracking down one of the biggest narcotics rings in the history of the Bureau. But we didn't know that then. All we knew then was that we'd had a tip to watch the docking of a certain vessel from the Orient and that a kid sailor had walked off it to his death. The next step was to identify the man who got away. It wasn't too hard to do. We have a pretty thorough filing system. He turned out to be an old friend, listed by the Bureau as Pete Carter. Hi, boss. Morning. Hi, Mort. Sam. Well, what'd you find? It's Carter, all right. Only a little older and heavy enough. <laughs> Aren't we all? Pete Carter, alias Carl Noble, alias Harvey Coleman. What's our last report on him? Uh, late 41, uh, early 42. Always a West Coast operator? As far as we know. I don't like it. Steady operator, long record. Drops out of circulation during the war. But now he's back. A guy like Carter doesn't play for peanuts. He'd have an organization in back of him. He'd have a new source of supply lined up. I tell you, this guy's big time. He's latched onto something. Like what? Our ports of entry are closed like rat holes. We know there's nothing coming in from the Far East. You customs men have a big territory here, fella. 1,800 miles of coastline. Borders north and south. What do you think? I don't know, but I don't like it. Let's put him under surveillance and see what that gets us. Ordinarily, yes. This time, I'd say no. This time, I'd say bring him in. But he's the only lead we've got to the boys at the top of the mob. If we bring him in, we tip our hand. If we don't, it might take months, years, before we get to the top. I want to crack this outfit now. It's liable to take a lot longer than that if he won't talk. What's the ballistics report on the kid sailor? He's got something. It shows your gun didn't kill him. Or yours either. So it must have been Carter. Yeah. Bring him in. With a murder rap hanging over him, he might sing like a canary. OK, boss. A successful manhunt is usually the result of long and often dull routine. But there is one shortcut, the professional informer, who makes a business of picking up a few precarious dollars by selling scraps of information to the authorities. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. When it does, it can save a lot of time. This time, it did. Hello, Mr. Morton. Carter is at the Zelda Apartments, corner Grant Street, room 303.
Well, there goes our lead. Yeah, proves one thing anyway. Benson's hunch about the outfit behind him. Yeah, they play rough. Smart, too, way ahead of us. They knew we'd talk when we got to them, so they beat us to it. Maybe we can nab the guy who did it. Professional job, hired gun. Chances are he didn't even know who he was working for. Oh, they'll send in another man to take up where Carter left off, and maybe after six months we get next to him, and maybe six months later we'll find out who his boss is, and by that time the stuff will be flooding in all over the country. It was a tough one to lose. Make anything out of that? No, a lot of mumbo jumbo. Figures mostly, probably records of transactions. This Vancouver outfit, the Arctic World Trading Company. That might be something, though. Worth checking with the Canadian people, anyway. Canadian boys have anything on the Vancouver angle? Oh, they know about an Arctic World Trading Company in Vancouver, all right. A guy named William McCandless. They've got no record on him. There must be some connection of the outfits listed in Carter's little black book. Why don't we try to move in on them? No, no good. You don't know what you're up against. For an undercover job, Sam, you gotta know who you're playing with. What'll convince them, what they'll believe. That's the trouble with this thing. There's nothing to go on, nothing to get your teeth in. But they're out there somewhere, just getting started. And pretty soon we'll be seeing some of the results. Heaven knows they're bad enough now. Admissions to the narcotics ward of the city hospital, the county jail hospital, the morgue, all in a week. Maybe that's why a guy like me stays on in this business. I can't think of any other reason. But I really hate the rats that are responsible for that kind of thing. I hate them with every bone in my body. If people could only see some of the poor, pathetic wrecks that we see every day. Well, that's not getting us anywhere. I think I got a notion. Wanna let me try it? What? I know a guy who can get me into that mob. In Vancouver? Any mob. Who? Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans? Are you crazy? Maybe. Maybe I was crazy. It was a long chance to take. I was the one who'd sent Johnny Evans up to Alcatraz. I had known him ever since we both were kids. He'd never been a narcotics operator, but he was a gangster and a hoodlum. And he hated every cop that ever breathed. And me, most of all. There was one thing, though. One thing that I knew about Johnny that nobody else ever did. And that's what I was counting on. It would be pretty rough on Johnny, but I thought I knew what he'd say. talk to you. I got a job to do. There's a big push opening up. We think it begins in Vancouver. A guy named McCandless, but we don't know. We don't know where it goes from there. We only know there's a big mob somewhere, a big operation. I want you to get me in. I can't make any promises, but you might do yourself some good. Is that all? That's all. Only you haven't given me an answer. Cut it out. You might be an awful tough man with those hoodlums of yours, but to me, you're a dime a dozen. I'll make a deal with you. I'm gonna take you on the outside for 24 hours. I'm gonna tell you some things and show you some things. Then after that, if you want to come back here, all right. And no strings. Sure. You think you get me on the outside and I get a taste of it and I go crazy? Well, let me tell you something. I'll rot in this place forever before I'll be a stool pigeon for a copper. How long you been in here? You know how long. Yeah. Town's changed a lot in three years, Johnny. New faces, 
New places. All the girls got the new look. What do you got to lose? 24 hours. What's this? They're gonna drive us. Showing the report. Can you identify the body? I knew she was sick, but I never knew she that wasn't she... sick. She was murdered. Not your way, not with a gun, but she was murdered just the same. And she was murdered for money. You know what the score is. You know the racket and the kind of guys that are in it. They killed her. They killed her for the few bucks they could squeeze out of her every week to get the stuff she needed. You know how they die, Johnny? You got any idea what it's like? What they go through from that first time they find they can't get along without it? How they have to have more and more until every cent they can lay hands on goes into it? How they begin to hit the skids and they can't raise the money anymore? They'll do anything for it then, Johnny. Anything. Shut up. They can't get enough now. Pretty soon, every nerve in their body is screaming, and they're tearing off their clothes, and they're tearing at their skinny bodies with their nails and screaming. That's how they died, Johnny. Screaming. Shut up! That's how she died. All right. But I haven't forgotten a thing. And if you've got any idea you're going to come back here and brag about how you made a stool pigeon out of Johnny Evans, forget it. Because my chance will come. And when it does, I'll get you, copper. And good. 35, robbery, one year suspended. Uh, come on, come on. 36, armed robbery, Indiana, two to five. 43, sent to the rock for... What names you use? Real name, Michael R. Doyle. In Chicago, Mike Doyle. Indiana. Come on, it's my neck, too, if you ever come up with the wrong answer. Indiana, Manny Dayton. On the coast, Mike Doyle. James Rowe. James J. Hanlon. Your clothes are wrong. Get a pair of $30 shoes and a couple of suits. Something sharp. 
You can't carry these. They got your initials on them. Yeah, yeah, I know. This thing's no good. It's got copper written all over it. Get another one. And put some bullets in it. Your train leaves at 10.45. Here's your tickets and money. You can get more if you need it, but try and make it last. You know how the budget is. <laughs> There's a phony record on you going into the files tonight, just in case. Here's a copy of all the Canadian boys have on the Vancouver push and McCandless. There's not much there, and I don't think it'll do you any real good, but I thought you might want to look at it on the way up. And here's the type of gun you wanted. OK? OK. You sure you want to go ahead with this, Mort? Uh-huh. Well. I want to tell you something, Evans. I don't like this, and I don't like you. There better not be anything go wrong. Goodbye, Copper. Once we'd crossed the border into Canada, I began to think of all the things that could go wrong. I had a promise from Johnny. It was a double promise, and I knew he'd keep both ends of it if he could. From now on, my life would be in his hands, 24 hours a day. I thought of the kind of men we were going up against, and what they'd done to Pete Carter just to make sure he'd keep his mouth shut. I thought of all the ways they could figure out to dispose of a certain federal cop if they ever caught him. But it was too late to worry about that now. Can I help you? Mr. McCandless, then? Tell him it's Johnny Evans from the States. Is it Mr. Johnny Evans to see you, Mr. McCandless, from the States? Mr. McCandless will see you in his office. Thank you. I'm Evans. Hi, Johnny. This is my partner, Mike Doyle. Hello, Mike. Uh, sit down, fellas. Well, well, Johnny Evans. I've heard a lot about you. Uh, been away, haven't you? Yeah. What are you doing in this part of the country? We're traveling. Just making a few business connections. Is that why you came to see me? Yeah. You're sort of on our list. What kind of business? Buying. Selling. You mean you'd like to trade in the kind of merchandise I handle? If your stuff is up to standard, then we can make a deal. You understand, of course, I'm strictly wholesale. I don't keep anything here but a few samples for show. Here's a lovely item. I can get these now, too. I can make you a pretty good proposition on stuff like that. Yeah, that's real nice. But it isn't exactly the kind of stuff we had in mind. Mike Doyle. Seems to me I used to know a guy by that name. Kansas City. I was there for a while. What outfit? Willie Green. I don't remember ever seeing you before, though. Maybe you know a guy I knew in Frisco, Pete Carter. Pete Carter, huh? Didn't he get in some kind of trouble? Who do you think you're talking to, McCandless? A couple of saps? I just spent three years on the rock. He spent two. You want to check it? 
Take it easy. I'll take it the way I see it. We came here to talk a business deal. If you don't want to hear it, say so, but don't try to play games. Take it easy, Johnny. Just like to make sure who I'm dealing with, that's all. Well, now you know. You fellas gonna be in town long? Long enough. There's a joint called the Frontier Club down on Columbia Street. Meet me there tonight, maybe we can work something out. That's better. Get Terry on the phone. Tell her I want to see her up here right away. Yes, gentlemen. Mr. McCann, let's come in here. We're supposed to meet him here. Oh, yes. This way, please. He's not here yet, but he asked me to have you wait for him. Uh, your table, gentlemen. Hey, Jimmy, get me another one, will you? What are you, a couple of new recruits for the goon squad? No, uh, we're just here to do a little business with Mr. McCandless. You a friend of his? Yeah, I'm a friend of his. A lucky fella. Well, his luck's about to run out. What kind of business you fellas in? Oh, uh, furs. You know something? You're kind of cute for a fur merchant. What's your name? Mike Doyle. I'm Terry Stewart. You want to dance, Mike Doyle? Uh, thanks. We got business. Come on. I'm the gallon type. Um, you better hold this for me. So the ice won't melt. scared. I bruise easy, but I don't break. It's the first time I've danced with a girl in three years. What's the matter? You got something against girls? Where I've been, they didn't have any girls. Oh. Who's your friend? Just a business partner. He's nice. I mean, he seems kind of different than the usual bunch of crumbs that hang around an outfit like this. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Not that there's anything wrong with you either. What's your name? Johnny Evans. Where are you from, Johnny? The States. California. Oh, California. You mean there's still a place where it's warm and they got palm trees? And you can lie out in that lovely hot sun all the year round? I guess so. You know California? Uh-uh. Uh, I was brought up in Tucson, Arizona. I wish I'd never left it. I've been in this dump for two years. The only time I've ever been warm was once I went to sleep with a cigarette and I set the bed on fire. When are you going back? Depends. Is uh, your friend going with you? Listen, sister, if you're figuring on making a fair switch, count him out. I'm telling you for your own good. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Lately, I've been... I'm just nervous. Forget it. You want to go back to that drink now? It won't be such a bad idea. Hello, Mac. Hi, baby. Uh, this is my partner, uh, Ray Dallas, Johnny Evans. Hi. Hello. Sit down, sit down. That you? I'll keep quiet, Mac. I just want to... Go on, go on, beat it. I just want to talk. Sorry I'm late. I was held up at the office. Well, happy days. Well, fellas, what's your proposition? I told you. We'll buy or we'll sell. <laughs> Anybody can do that if they got it to sell. What's so special about your push? How much can you handle? All I can get. So you're not getting any? Why didn't you say so? 
couple of guys that are new in this racket, you'll know an awful lot. I know the border. How much can you give us? More than Pete Carter ever did. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Where are you going to get it? Same place he did. You got the connections? No. You're going to give it to us. How do you like that? These two guys come up here with a lot of big talk about buying and selling, and what are they going to do it with? Our connections. What do you think we are, a couple of marks? Shut up, Mac. Come on. Wait a minute, Doyle. What do you think? You're the only outfit in the country? Sit down. Sit down. What's the matter with you guys? Can't you talk a little business without getting sore? We just want to know who's going to get what out of this, that's all. What do I have to do, spell it for you? We bank the deal with our own dough. We take the chances. If there's a rumble, we do the time. And we got the fix. You got the fix in at the border? How else do you think we're going to get it over? Dig a tunnel? Well, where do we go from here? We'll let you know. But uh, it might take a little time. Don't let it take too much time. Let's go. Mike! Mike, take me with you. What do you mean? Take me out of here. Back to the States, wherever you're going. I can't do it by myself. It stopped me. But I gotta get out of here right away. I can't stand it anymore. Mike, I'm sick of something. Look, I can't take you where I'm going. Be a good kid. Go on back to your party, huh? Mike! Please, please. All cop, aren't you? Right to the heart. Any stopovers, miss? No, I'm going straight to the Tucson. How did she know where we were going? Why don't you ask her? Gee, Mike, what a nice surprise. I'll bet. Where are you going? Tucson. That's my hometown, you know. I, I finally got my own consent to give that big ape the brush off and go on back to the hash house. It, it, it may not be much of a life, but at least it's an honest... Save it. I've heard it from experts. McCandless put you up to this, didn't he? Didn't he? All right, Mike. But this is on the level. I've been trying to break with McCandless for months. Only I didn't have any place to go. No one to turn to. Then when you came along, well, you seemed different from the rest of the mugs I've always known. Like you might give somebody a break. And then when I heard you were going to Tucson... Honest, Mike, I wouldn't be any trouble. I wouldn't ask for anything special. It, maybe after a while, we might even make a go of it. I only want a chance, that's all. You don't believe me, do you? No. Look, Mike. There's some things that it isn't easy for a girl to say. Even a girl like me. Maybe now's the time to say them. I've had a pretty rugged life. But I learned one lesson. There's only one thing in the whole world you can count on. The only thing I want to ever have wanted. That's money. And I don't care how I get it. You may not think so, but I'll always land on my feet. I'm pretty smart. I know what I got on the ball. If you can't use it, okay. Where you're going, there'll be somebody who can. I'm not going back to that hash house, Mike. Not me. Not ever. Now, you listen to me. When this train comes into Seattle, you're going to get off and go right back there to Vancouver, where you belong. Because if you don't, you're going to get into the biggest trouble you ever had in your life. You understand? No, she won't. Because unless she goes along, I don't either. You mean that? You know I do. Just 
doesn't figure. Unless the crazy fool's actually fallen for it. It's a cross. Can't you see that? Can't you see it coming a mile away? Yeah, but the angle. The angle. What's the angle? A guy like Johnny Evans wants to do a job on you. He doesn't need a dame to tell him how. Look, Mort. The only thing you've got on this guy, the only thing that's keeping him in line is a girl, a dead girl, a memory. So he gets a new girl. What do you think's gonna happen? I don't know. All I know is this looks like the biggest thing we've run across in years. Any chance you could play it alone from here on? Uh -uh. I haven't got the in. All McCandless would give us is the name of a dude ranch in Tucson. We'll be contacted there. No. If we're gonna go through with it, I've gotta have him with me. I'll let the Tucson boys know you're in the neighborhood. Just one thing. If you do get in a jam, don't play the grandstand. Pick up and get out of there. Good agents are too hard to train, and I don't like to lose them. Johnny, get a cab. I'll take care of the bags. We're going to swimming pools, tennis courts, riding stables, private bungalows. Oh, yeah, it's a big bar amp. Hey, you folks going there? Uh huh. Oh, say, you'll have a swell time. People from all over the country go there. Big shots from the east. Society people. I guess I finally hit the big time, huh? Only it's a little bigger than I figured on. I can't go to a place like that, Johnny. Why not? Something no girl can ever quite get across to a man. I never traveled in company like that. Look, I'll give you a ring when I get a room. Then maybe we can get together sometime later, huh? Get in. No, Johnny. I said get in. Play sure has changed. There's the hash house I used to work at. What a dump. Driver, pull up over there a minute, will you? A couple of things I want to pick up. Do you mind? There you are, kid. See anything you like? Oh, Johnny, I couldn't. Don't be a sucker. He's got more dough than the United States Treasury. Come on. Sir? I, uh, no. I'm sorry, sir. We're booked up for nearly a year in advance. There may be some cancellations, of course, but I'm afraid I couldn't possibly give you anything for at least a month. Oh, I might have known it couldn't be real. You sure you're not expecting us? Doyle and Evans? Oh, uh, yes. You're, uh, Mr. Doyle? Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, I believe I have a note right here. Yes? I have a nice double bungalow for the two gentlemen and a single for the lady. Would you uh, sign, please? Pat. Bungalow A for the two gentlemen. Room 1C for Miss Stewart. Yes, sir. 
don't look at me like that. The chemist didn't exactly have to be a quiz kid to figure out where I was going. Or with who. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. I uh, hope you have a very pleasant stay. You're not kidding me, don't you? I don't know what it is with you and that dame, but it better be on the level. How could you tell, Copper? Even if it was. Hello? Yeah. Hi, kid. I don't know. Okay, I'll meet you in the bar. You stick around. Don't be silly. I said stick around. What's the matter, Copper? Nervous in the service? Come in. Hey, strangers. Welcome to the old B Bar M bunkhouse and put her there. What's your handle, partner? Doyle, Mike Doyle. Well, proud is mine, but all the cowpokes in these parts call me Hank, and I'd consider it a real favor if you'd do the same. And you must be Mr. Evans. Mighty glad to have you with us. You know, I'm kind of the foreman around here. Combination manager, greeter, chuck wagon boss. <laughs> Oh, say, I'm mighty sorry I wasn't here to give you the glad hand when you unsaddled your cayuses this morning, but I had to fly up to Phoenix on a little business. Well, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I just want you to know that we aim to make you wranglers feel at home here every way we can. Anything you want, any little old thing at all, you just name it. Make mine with plain water. Oh, say, that puts me in mind of something. We're having our big frontier dance tomorrow night. Do you all bring any Western duds with you? No, uh, we're here on business. Well, no harm makes it a little pleasure with your business, huh? <laughs> But don't you worry about the duds. We have everything right here, everything you need. Yeah, thanks. Fix you up like a real dude. Thanks a lot. Oh, no trouble, no trouble at all. You folks just go ahead and have yourself a grand old time. friend of mine here from south of the border. Senor Martinez, Mr. Stewart, Thank Mr. You. Doyle, Mr. Evans. Say, how are those duds I sent over to you folks? You like them? They fit you all right? Huh? Fine. Thanks. Good. Yeah, they look fine. And if I may say so without offense, the young lady looks very lovely tonight. You really think so? I sure do. <laughs> well, you folks just go right ahead and have yourselves a lot of fun, huh? Okay, More fun than being out at a wake with a couple of undertakers. What's the matter with you fellas? The deal will come through sooner or later. It's not as if this was such a tough place to sweat it out. Mike, relax. What are you trying to do? Set a world's record for staying mad at somebody? Come on.
permanent water place. Yes. Have you seen anything of Mr. Evans or Miss Stewart? No, sir, I haven't. Looking for something, Mac? Yeah, I was uh, looking for a pal of mine. Well, you won't find him around here. Be a good guy and go on back to the party. Sure, sure. Well, Mr. Doyle, well, what are you doing out there? You... Getting lost in our wide open spaces or something, huh? I was just looking for my sidekick. You haven't seen him, have you? Why, no. No, I haven't. Not lately, that is. But one of your hired hands just stuck a rod in my ribs. Did what? Oh, <laughs> that, that must have been Pete. Don't pay no never mind to him. He's just one of our watchmen around here. Sometimes he gets kind of highfalutin ideas about his job. But, but say, I'm sure glad I run into you. I've been meaning to buy you a little drink. Uh, no, oh, come on, sir. come on. You know, generally I get acquainted with my folks the first day they're here, but it seems like I've been so busy lately, I've just been plain neglecting you, fella. <laughs> Rest your bones. You know, I got some stuff here I bet you haven't seen the likes of since Prohibition. Come on, let's hear it. You knew, Nick. Why didn't you say so? I told you. I was covering his play. Not good enough. Who's your sidekick? He signed his name. Look on the register. Oh, small too. You never worked with him before. What's the angle? He's banking for me. He's got the dough. He's a federal, isn't he? Isn't he? Oh. Isn't he? Oh. Sure, he's Sherlock Holmes. Make it easy for yourself, sucker. We just broke him down. He told us he was a Fed. Yeah, sure. Sure he did. He's a better, isn't he? That's enough, Charlie. Well, I guess the boys are on the level. Are you sure? You made up your mind? Yep. I don't like that kind of stuff. Well, neither do I, my boy. Neither do I. But Evans never was in this business. If he'd just been a little more friendly, he'd have saved you both a lot of trouble. I was waiting for you to make the first move. I've been away for three years. How did I know what you were covering with that heck play? I didn't even tell him that... Well, you know, we got to be careful. But I hope you don't hold it against me, because I'd like to see you boys do a little business. With who? With me. He's Nick Avery, the biggest guy in the racket. Get Martinez in here. Let's have a little talk, huh? Oh, and uh, maybe you better run along now, and we'll have a little drink later, huh? Sure. So you're the banker, eh? That's right. You got the money with you? You'll get the money when we get what we want. You've got a smart partner here, Jolly. Yeah. We want to get moving. When do we get it? When do we get it, he said. You know, we've been worrying about that same little thing ever since the war. I thought you had a source. Well, I hope your horses. I didn't say I didn't. You know, a man can work and scheme on something for years. 
Finally, he gets it set just right, and some stranger comes along and takes the whole thing for granted. You know, maybe you boys haven't heard it where you've been, but it's been kind of rough in this business. Of course, I haven't had a bad time. I got a good front here. Of course, it don't pay for itself, but... You have a source, or don't you? Do we have a source? About 500 acres of flowers in our own refining plant. You boys think you could handle that much? Yeah. We'll take our piece of it. When can we get it? Well, now, you boys just simmer down. You know, these things take a little time. You just laze around here and enjoy yourself. I'll tell you when we want to see your money. Oh, say, uh, I wouldn't want to see anything happen to you boys while you're here. So, uh, Charlie, uh, you just sort of keep an eye on it, will you? Sure, Nick. Bye. For what? What do you think would happen to me if I chipped? When I get in the clear, copper, watch out. Give me another, Charlie. What are you trying to do? Drink the joint dry? I'll kill time my way, you kill it yours, okay? Hello, fellas. Oh, hello. Nick is flying Martinez down to the border. The border? Mm -hmm. He asked me to go with him. Do you mind? No, why should I? Have fun. I told you I'd land on my feet. Happy landings. I don't like that. Then why don't you do something about it? Howdy, boy. Take it easy. She's no good for you. If that's what she wants, let her have him. Only a cop could be that dumb. She wants you. Don't you know that yet? Me? Yes, you. Do you think I brought her along for myself? I brought her because she's a decent kid. And I didn't want to see her end up on a slab, too. Because I thought when you saw how she felt about you, you'd at least give her a break. Try to help her. Because I was chump enough to think that you really cared about what happened to people. Take it easy. Well, you're not kidding me anymore. You don't care about people. To you, it's nothing but a game. Hide and seek. Cops and robbers. Anything goes as long as you come in the winner. You're not a man. You're what you always have been and always will be. A rotten, stinking... I'll take care of him. Rest, sport. The boss wants to see you. All right, tell him I'll be right over. I'll wait. Suit yourself. Johnny, that's a great idea. I'm surprised I didn't think of it myself. Oh, hi there, boys. Come in. Come in. Well, I understand you fellas had a little trouble last night. Just bottle trouble, nothing serious. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Because tonight we make our first haul. It'll be a big one, and I want you boys along. Where are we going? The border. No galleys? I hope you're not going to try to get it over with that plane. No, 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 no. We've got to be a little cuter than that. Your boy here had a couple of pretty good ideas. Got a real sense of humor, too. Well, that's about it. We leave tonight, nine sharp. Oh, just one little thing. It isn't that I don't trust you boys, but I don't want any slip-ups. 
So Joey here is going to be with you till we leave. He's my own personal bodyguard and a mighty fine boy. Uh, you stay here. rustling me up some chow. I haven't had breakfast yet. What's the matter? Can't you talk? He's a dummy. He don't know how. He don't know how to do much of anything except shoot a gun. Playing games now? Look, I'm in a jam. I gotta take a chance, a long chance, that I had you figured wrong. I'm not gonna make any speeches about it. I haven't got time. I'll just give it to you straight. And you make up your own mind. There's gonna be a little party tonight. They're gonna take me along for the ride. From the way things look, it may be my last ride. Try to get through to this number. Tell whoever answers that you're calling for me, Morton. Tell them that it's tonight. The border, no gallus. They'll know what to do. You got all that? You understand it? So you're a cop. station wagon. Johnny, you drive. You in the front with her. Pete, keep your eye on the girl. Mr. Stewart. The boss told me I should take care of you. How about a drink? Thanks very much, but I don't... Sorry, miss. I got my orders. Oh, well. <laughs> to disobey orders. Joe, two doubles. What time is the pickup? We've got plenty of time. at the next cutoff. for a new subway? That's no subway, copper. It's a grave. <laughs> Let's cut out the act. If you think... You know, for a federal cop, you're going to come in mighty handy tonight. 
You know where to take him? Yeah. Martinis won't know who you're bringing, but he's got everything set. I'm sending Joey with you to bring the car back here. Besides, he can sort of give me an eyewitness account. I thought he couldn't talk. He draws pictures. <laughs> By the way, where will I send your cut? You can figure this for my cut. Get in. You're as sharp as a $10 tack. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, where are you going? Oh, you can't bear to let me out of your sight, can you? You want to come along? <laughs> Miss, you've got to call this number for me. Tell them you're calling for a man named Morton. Tell them to get down to the border, New Gellies, as fast as they can. You understand? A man is going to be killed. A man. All right. All right, just a minute. Don't use the phone here. Uh, call from down at the gas station. Please. They'll get you, Johnny. Once you kill a federal cop, there's no place on earth small enough to hide you. Shut up. They'll get you. They'll get you if it takes 20 years. They'll get you and they'll bring you back and you'll fry. Shut up! Start walking. Turn around. So long, copper. You speak English? Que pasa? You speak English? Si, senor. I've got to get to the border. I'm a United States Treasury agent. 
Tell him to take me there right away. El señor quiere que lo lleves a la frontera inmediatamente. Muy bien, señor, vamos, ahí está el carro. Here. I'm Morton. I'm Pringle, the Tucson office. This is Barton, the customs agent. Hi. Well, Bill Benson was sure worried about you, fella. You got my message? Yeah. Some woman phone. Nothing so far, huh? No. They're not going to run the stock now, not after what's happened. Look, fella, let's not kid ourselves. We blew this one. Benson gave me the pitch. I know what happened. So what? We can't always guess right. But they didn't know you had a tip. I didn't know myself until just now. All right, but something went wrong, or you wouldn't still be alive to talk about it. Well, that's just it. That's what doesn't figure. Cover! Johnny. Who did it? The kid. He spotted you. Listen, Cover. I had to plan it that way. I had to play it for the brakes. Sure, sure you did. Where's the kid now? Wait. A funeral. It was a funeral. What? They... Get him inside. Get an ambulance for him. Did a funeral go through here tonight? The funeral? Holy mackerel, sure there was a funeral. Went through here about a half an hour ago. We searched the hearse, we looked them all over good. Only there was one place we didn't look. Come on. Bill, phone ahead. Have the highway patrol pick us up on the other side. Mac, you and Joe, come with me. Grave, huh? That was Johnny's idea. Looks like he really came through for you. Yeah. I can understand why he played it that way now, but it sure looked bad at the time. Here they come. Yeah, I might be able to use this. Thanks. There it is. Catch your lights, pull into that side road. Make it as quiet as you can. your size. The stuff was there, all right. Enough room in there to pack a ton of it. Let's go. Come on. Pringle, the Tucson office. Pringle, the Tucson office. Over. Tucson to Pringle, go ahead. Contact local authorities for a full description of Nicholas Avery and Charles Bordero. Thought to be making a getaway from the B Bar M Ranch. Cover that spot. Broadcast a full description on a four-state alarm and set up roadblocks. These men are wanted on a narcotics charge. They're dangerous and fully armed. Confirmed. Over. Roger Wilco. That is all. Pringle to Tucson. Out. Don't make a run for it now. They'll be pretty desperate. What about the girl? The one that phoned? I was just thinking the same thing. We gotta get out of here. Why? Where are we going? Across the border. Where are the fellas? They ran into a little trouble. What kind of trouble? 
the same kind of trouble we're going to run into. If we don't move in a hurry. I'll, uh, I'll get my things. You won't have time. Bring that. Come on. In a matter of hours, the greatest international narcotics ring since the war was stopped cold before it ever got started. In simultaneous raids, Martinez and his gang were rounded up by Mexican authorities. And 1,700 miles away in Vancouver, British Columbia, the McCandless mob was taken into custody. Six months later, the trials were over, with convictions in every instance and sentences ranging anywhere from five to 20 years. And star witnesses for the government had been a girl named Terry Stewart and an ex-convict named Johnny Evans. So long, copper. <laughs>